Hello, welcome to the Gajimaru's quick review of the movie Bullet Train. We got a preview of the film at the Aritani Theater Hall. There we got to have an awesome Q&A session with uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. And so, Kurt, what did you think of the film? I had my reservations about this film. And I thought that it was just going to be another film that utilizes Japan like a background. Mm -hmm. And the place, the people, they're all just going to be a background to Hollywood actors that mm -hmm. are not Japanese. And you look at the cast list and it's Brad Pitt and Bad Bunny and Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry. And you're like, oh, Hiroki Sonata's in this, but he just, is he, is he going to just be the token Japanese yeah. person? And those are the main characters you see in the trailer anyway. Mm -hmm. However, that did not turn out to be the case. Yeah. When we first saw the initial trailer a few months back, I, at least you, me, I was worried that it, this would be a overblown, even like quirky uh, version of John Wick. The initial trailer had Hiroyuki Sonata, but he's kind of... He appears for maybe 15, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. So yeah. I was afraid that he would kind of just be like the stereotypical uh, master samurai. Yep. He trains Brad Pitt to be yeah. uh, the, the cool assassin or something like yeah. that. Wait, that's a shit deal. I was quite happy that they did not go that route. Yes. And in fact, Hiroyuki Sanada and uh, Andrew Koji. Andrew Koji. Yeah, yeah. they're comes, the heart of this the film. They're the heart of this film. For and sure. the first 10 minutes of the movie doesn't even feature Brad Pitt, yeah. which was quite surprising to me. I thought Andrew Koji was a breath of fresh air. Yeah. I think he gave a lot to this I film. I didn't even know he was going to be in the film. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, same. Yeah. I don't think he was in the trailer at all. Yeah. So I think that. Andrew Koji and Hiroyuki Sanada were perfect for their roles. I think that talks to the overall casting of this film felt really, really great. Yes. I think Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry as these British twins mm -hmm. were spectacular. Yeah, it, I mean, the way they riff off of each other, their comedic timing yeah. is perfect. Oh yeah. Joey King, who I'm not as familiar with, was pretty good in her role. Yeah. She's very menacing without having mm -hmm. to be the one to hold the gun, as yeah. she says. Yeah. Oh, of course. And then also, you know, speaking of people with just minor roles, uh, Masioka and Karen Fukuhara both have uh, minor yes. roles, but they have memorable scenes. As, yeah, soon, as, as like, soon as I saw them, I'm like, yeah. same thing as you said, yeah. uh, Karen, Karen Fukuhara. Fukuhara. Yeah, yeah I, I was hoping she was going to have a bigger role. Yeah, same. Bad Bunny mm. nailed it. Yeah. I think these stunt casting uh, singers, they don't feel like actors. They just feel like themselves. Like in A Star is Born, Lady Gaga never, it was, she was just Lady Gaga, yeah. right? He brought that, this energy. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that I wasn't expecting. Michael Shannon, who I, I Oh, I had no clue. I literally yeah. gasped. Yeah. When the main villain takes off the mask. I'm like, Michael Shannon's in this movie? Yeah. What? Because I, I, I was curious because they, they, they build up his character. Yeah. The White Death. Yeah. So much. And I'm like, who, who is it going to be? Yeah. And they knock it out of the park with him. Michael Shannon is amazing. The one person that I did not like was Brad Pitt. Really? I thought I'm Brad, surprised. the whole time I watched this movie, every time Brad Pitt was in it, I was like, imagining Keanu. There he is. It, this definitely would have been a perfect Keanu. It would have been yeah, a perfect Keanu. Vehicle, but I, I quite enjoyed Brad Pitt. Like, Brad Pitt he has did a that okay very- job. No, he's got that very easygoing, kind of almost hippie-ish vibe. Yeah. And I, I think that does work. And, you know, Keanu brings that naturally. Yeah. And I, I think uh, while Brad Pitt is not necessarily to the same degree of that easygoing, I think he still pulls it off. Like, the, and he's incredibly charming mm -hmm. and likable. And he's just such a nice guy. Well, I mean, I think that's what Brad Pitt brings to every role. Yeah. You know? and, and that's generally how he is. We love Brad Pitt here. Yeah. So... This is not us saying Brad Pitt is a bad actor or Brad Pitt didn't do a good job. Uh, I just felt that what was a big downside in all of these great casting choices mm. was the fact that I just could not stop thinking that Keanu would have done great in this bit. And I think it also would have solved a big part of my issues with using Japan as a uh, background. Yeah, Keanu in the lead role gets more of a pass. Even though Keanu... I think for the Asian American community, mm. even though Keanu isn't like full Asian or even half Asian, uh. I think the Asian community <laughs> really claims Keanu Reeves. Mm. He was in Ali Wong's Netflix film with Randall Park. Mm. He was one of the three 
hot Asian guys that Ali Wong dates. Yeah. Do you think like an uh, an actor like Henry Golding with his prominence in like Crazy Rich Asians, do you think he, that would have been an I think Henry yeah. Golding could have pulled it off. You think but, so? Yeah. yeah. But I think it would have been great to see an Asian American actor in the lead role. Yeah, of course. For sure. What did you think about the choreography and the stunt in this film? The fights I thought were great. My personal favorite was the silent car fight between oh, yes. that, uh, that, uh, Ryan that. Tyree Henry and yes. Brad Pitt. That, that's a fantastic yeah. one, yes. And I was actually kind of shocked at how restrained it is for the first two acts. Yeah. And, and in that Bad Bunny fight, I, I do like the kind of the Jackie Chan inspired martial arts yeah. using your environment. Yes. The, the the fact that the main weapon in that scene it's is the briefcase. The briefcase. I love oh, it. Oh, it was yeah. fantastic, right? And then, yeah, at the end, we do get this big spectacular fight. It, oh, yeah. It, it's quite fun. I do like, and we get our boy, Hiroyuki Sonata, gets a time to, his chance to shine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was actually really worried about the a Russian character being this Yakuza boss because it definitely felt like another typical Hollywood. Oh, the, he's the he's the most Yakuza Yakuza, not any of the Japanese people. Yeah. And I was worried because Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson's character take out 18 Yakuza thugs mm. like it's nothing, mm. right? And so it feels it's starting to feel like the Asian characters are just background mini henchmen to be killed by our heroes, yeah. right? Yeah. But the the turn the big twist where Hiroyuki Sonata is revealed to be a member of the Yakuza who was opposed yeah. to the White Death yeah. helped shed some of that. Mm. And the fact that Hiroyuki Sonata got to be a badass during his fight, really, it, it just icing on the cake, really. Yeah. The one complaint I had, mm. besides the the stuff about Asian Americans in, in Hollywood. That's a whole own, you know, mm. discussion, right? We tackled it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think the other problem that I had with this was the first act could have used some trimming. I think that it went to yeah. flashback a little too much because at the end of the day, the strength of this movie isn't really the story, even if it's fun and compelling. <laughs> we want to see people fight. Yeah. And I, I also wanted to give a big uh, shout out to the soundtrack in this film. I, oh. I absolutely dug the Japanese covers of Staying Alive yeah, and uh, Japanese uh, covers Holding Out for a Hero. Yes. yes. So th those were awesome. As, as soon as I heard that, I was like, "Woo! damn, they yeah. went out. That f track fits the film. Uh -huh. And I really do enjoy that they, they used Japanese covers of it. And the biggest thing, which I think a lot of people our age probably didn't catch, was the use of Q Sakamoto's insanely popular song sukiyaki mm, which yes. plays right before holding out for a hero yeah when that song came on i gasped throwing in uh, that track yeah really helped to differentiate this from isle of dogs or last samurai mm, yeah any anybody who is like japanese and that, yeah they know they would know that song yeah yeah it's, it's such a famous yes. song yes. you hear it and you just and it's used so well. Yeah. It fits, and then you transition to holding the holding out for a hero cover. Amazing. Yeah. The utilization of those tracks, I think, really, really helped to add to the overall atmosphere and feel of this film. Yeah. And the authenticity yeah. that they're, they're they're being genuine. Any anything else you wanted to? No. Uh, overall, I I really did enjoy this film. It mm -hmm. did not just meet my expectations, but it surpassed it. Of course. Yes. And oh, so yeah. um, I, I definitely think that if you're looking for a summer blockbuster movie, this is one of the perfect oh, yeah. the perfect films to end your summer on. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's a great summer film. I think you can take it and the whole family will enjoy it. I think it's there's a little bit of something for everyone. Mm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a high, high recommend from us. Mm. And again, if you're we're worrying if you're in the Asian American community, yeah. we're worrying that this was going to be another last like, samurai or members of the geisha. Mm. You don't have to worry. Yeah.